Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and today we're going to look at the factors that affect biodiversity. And the lesson activity within that tutorial is called Gypsy Moth Invasion. Gypsy moth is an invasive species in the United States. They are native to Europe, and their larvae eat a high volume of tree leaves. They can destroy between 60 to 100% of leaves, and this is a process known as defoliation. Without leaves, trees can't perform photosynthesis. So these guys come in and eat leaves. No leaves means that trees cannot get the nutrients that it needs from the sunlight, and they cannot go through the, uh, the carbon cycle. So a group of scientists monitored the population of these gypsy moths, you can see here, and the rate of defoliation. So the rate of um, defoliation would be the rate at which these guys are eating leaves and preventing trees from getting nutrients. And this is all over a four year period. So we had the population of the moths, starting out at 3,800, and by year four, 52,000. And on the other hand, we're, we're measuring the acres of land with defoliation, 55,000, all the way to 740,000. So in part A, calculate the percentage increase in population between year one, year two, um, between one and two, between two and three, and three and four. So. Here's how you calculate that. Here's an example for year one. You take the population difference between year two and year one, and then you divide by year one's population. Okay? So uh, an easier way would be. Year B minus year A population. And then we divide all that by year, ah, sorry, by year A. Okay, so you take year B's population, subtract year A's population, divided by A's original population. And that will show you that from year one to year two, it increased 50%. From year two to three, you would take year three's population minus year two's population divided by year two's population because you're only measuring between year two and three. So you forget about one for now. And that was a 173% increase. So that was big. And then between three and four, that is a 231% increase. The region that the scientists are studying has 990,000 acres of land with trees and shrubs at risk of defoliation. For each year, calculate the percentage of the region that has defoliation and make a bar graph showing your findings. You can round percentages to the nearest whole. And here is the final look. It will have deforestation on the y-axis, the percentage, year one, year two, year three, year four. And it would measure like this. Um, and all we did for that is look at this column and divide these numbers each by 990,000. So for year one, you would get, um, you would take 55,100 divided by 990,000, which is like less than 10%. Then you take year two, 
acres, 125,460 divided by 990,000 and so on for all four years. You use the data you calculated in parts A and B to explain why gypsy moths could threaten biodiversity in the ecosystem. Well, the number of gypsy moths is growing exponentially in a very short period of time. This suggests that there are few predators controlling their population. This growth also aids the exponential destruction of shrubs and trees, which native species rely on for food and shelter. Increased competition for these resources will likely cause the population of many native species to decline. Over time, some of the native species may die out or leave the area, leading to a decline in biodiversity. So in essence, these guys are growing way too fast and nothing is keeping them in check. And this rapid growth is affecting the native species in a bad way. And that can upset the entire ecosystem and biodiversity. You want a diverse biosphere. It will help with um, survival and you all will not be competing for the same resources if you guys are diverse enough. If, even, if everyone finds a niche and they kind of stay in their lane, everyone's for the better. These guys, they kind of just come in, uh, eat as much as possible, and this can suck resources from other people, the other things as well, other species. In many states, gypsy moths are harming human residents and industries. Revise your explanation to the question in part C to explain how gypsy moths can negatively affect humans. Well, the rise of the gypsy moth population will eventually kill many trees as they won't be able to perform photosynthesis. This, this event, excuse me, will negatively affect the lumber and construction industries as well as the beauty of public and private landscapes. And I would say, uh, you know, we depend on trees for shade and they can uh, cool off the area in um, very hot places. Shade becomes a very big deal too. So that could be another explanation you can use. Part E, in their native habitat, a fungus that kills gypsy moths in the larva stage controls the population. But in the United States, attempts to control the population are not 100% efficient. Given the current rate of growth and defoliation, do you think gypsy moths could destroy the ecosystem or contribute to the development of the new uh, ecosystem in this region? Explain. Well, they're rapidly destroying trees. Trees and plants are producers. Producers transform the radiant energy from the sun into chemical energy. And that chemical energy is used for the entire ecosystem. Over time, tree loss could cause the ecosystem to collapse. Fewer trees could also lead to the growth of other native plants because there is less competition for space and other resources. Um, a change in foliage would directly affect the populations of native organisms in the region. And this process may lead to a new ecosystem. And that's not necessarily saying it's better or worse. It might just be changing. Um, but a change for more diversity is usually better for us and everyone within an ecosystem. The next video um, or the next lesson activity contains a video and it is about coral reefs and regenerating these bleached um, hurt coral reefs. And after you watch this video, I can't show it because it'll get taken down on uh, YouTube, which is where I upload these videos. So go watch it on your own and then come back here and we can go through the questions together. But from, for uh, part A, 
how can these artificial reefs protect biodiversity in the ocean ecosystem? So they're using these artificial reefs to kind of uh, help these ocean ecosystems. Many animals depend on corals for food and protection. By restoring the reefs using this method, they may be able to protect other populations of organisms from declining as well. Part B, based on the video, do you think corals are a keystone species in the ecosystem? Support your answer with evidence from the video. All right. After you watch the video, you'll be able to tell and answer this question very easily. Yes, they are keystone species. Maria, one of the experts in the video, stated that coral is required to keep the entire ecosystem in balance, which is definitely true for keystone species. If you were the head of an ocean conservation program, what concerns would you have about implementing this method of coral regeneration? One concern I have is the metal frames. I wonder if they could damage the natural coral in the region or if fish and other sea animals could become trapped in them. So that's one possible consideration. If you were writing a newspaper article about the people who started this program, what five questions would you ask them? Here's five you could possibly ask. What other methods of coral regeneration did you consider? How did you get the initial funding for your project? How fast do corals regenerate? Does this method have the same level of success in other parts of the world? How would you improve the project if you had the resources to do so? These questions deal with um, methodology. Methodology, like, did you consider other things? Why did you pick this one? Can this be used in every region in the world? How did you get money for it? Funding is always a big thing uh, with these endeavors. Initial funding, were they grants? Did you have to uh, get a loan or did businesses, uh, nonprofits donate to you? What happened? Does this method have the same level of success around the world? How would you improve the project if you had the resources to do so? So these are all really good questions to ask. Um, this, uh, these experts that are trying to heal these coral reefs. And that's it for the factors that affect biodiversity. I hope that was helpful. And if you have, if you have any more questions, you can uh, shoot me a, a message or text in Canvas you know, and uh, email me too. That can work too. But until next time, have a good one. See you guys later.